Hello everyone. Welcome back to Chop Code. In this tutorial, you will learn about the structure of the .NET MAUI template in Visual Studio. You will use this template for creating cross-platform mobile and desktop applications. In our previous tutorial, we talked about the architecture of .NET MAUI applications. If you have not gone through this video, I will strongly recommend you to go through that first before starting with the project. So let's start by creating our first .NET MAUI project in Visual Studio. To create a new .NET MAUI project, you have to open a new instance of Visual Studio, click on create a new project, and then select MAUI from the project types. From here, you need to select the .NET MAUI app template, click on next. Let's keep the name as MAUI app one. Next, we'll be using .NET 7.0 for this tutorial and click on create. It will take few seconds to create the project. And now we have our default project loaded. So we'll go through the project structure one by one and see what all new things Dot and Maui have provided to us. So for users who have already worked on Xamarin forms, you might be wondering, here we have only single project folder for Dot and Maui application. Whereas in our Xamarin forms project, we used to have separate projects for separate operating systems. For example, we used to have a separate project for Android, a separate project for iOS, and a separate project for our core files. But here in my application, we have a single project for every platform. We'll discuss this in detail. So let us start by going through the project structure. Just double click on the my application one. So here we can see .NET MAUI has simplified so many things and they have put together everything inside a single code base only. So inside the project structure, you can see the different pro projects which the .NET MAUI framework targets. We have the name of the application. You can see the display names, identifiers, versions, the different supported operating systems. And inside the item groups, you can also specify some customizations. For instance, you can specify the app icon here. You can specify the splash screen over here. You can also specify from which folder you want to pick the images. So currently we are picking the images from the resources folder. You can also specify some custom fonts and also specify some raw assets if you are using it in your project. For example, some JSON files or some text files. And here, this will show you all the different packages which this application is referring currently. Now coming to the platforms folder. If you expand this and see, here we have a separate folder for each platform. And inside each folder, we have the similar files which we used to have earlier in Xamarin forms. So inside these folders, if you have some platform specific code, you can write it here directly else most of the code base will be common across all these platforms next is resources folder here you can specify different resources which you will be using in your application for example the app icons fonts if you have some fonts which needs to be used in the application you have to add your fonts here images some txt or json files splash folder for the splash icon here we have a styles folder inside styles folder we have two xaml files one is colors and another is styles if you go ahead and open the colors.xml file you will see here we have defined different colors and their keys so if you have some generic colors to define in your application you can go ahead and put them here and similarly to define the generic styles you can define them separately in the styles.xml file so by default they have already defined few styles for different controls over here but if you want you can also define your styles here or you can add your custom style file and use it now coming to the application.xml file this file defines the application resources that the app will use in the XAML layout. 
earlier we used to have lot of crowd in this application.xaml file but now this has been simplified so inside this application.xaml file you can define the different resources which you are using inside your application so currently we are using two resources as you can see the colors.xaml and styles.xaml which we have discussed just before that so if you are using some of your custom resource files so in that case you have to add that resource file here in the application.xaml file as well in addition to the app.xaml file we also have a code behind file for app.xaml.cs this file defines the application class it represents your application at runtime the job of this class is to initialize your application and with the help of this main page property this defines which page will be displayed first when the application starts running here we are defining app shell page as the first page when the application loads now coming to the app shell page so this is the dot and my applications main structure dot and my shell provides many features that are beneficial for multi platform applications which includes app styling uri based navigation and layout options including flyout navigation and tabs for application routes so if you are not familiar with, with all those features don't worry we'll discuss them in our future videos so for now you can see that here we have a shell content tag and inside the content template we are using main page as the data template which means that when the application loads for the first time this main page will be loaded and displayed to the user and now coming to the main page so this is the main page which comes as default when you load the default project so here you can see we have a scroll view vertical stack layout two labels one image and a button so in dotnet my now we have vertical and horizontal stack layouts along with the normal stack layouts which we used to have earlier in xamarin forms so these using these specific stack layouts have some performance benefits over the traditional stack layout along with this main page xaml we also have a code behind file for this so here you can define different click events or any other events which you define in your xaml file so you can write the code for those events inside this file now coming to the most important and main file in our dot and my project that is myprogram.cs this file looks similar to a basic dotnet core application and also similar to that this file is the starting point of our application so when our application loads this create my app method will be called and what this does is it will initializes the builder first and it is the job of builder to perform different operations like to initialize our application to configure different fonts so whenever you add a new font you have to configure it here as well as we know dot and my is used for developing cross platform applications so whenever an application loads each platform have their separate initialization code as well but internally at the end of their initialization each and every platform will call this create my app method if you can expand the android folder and click on main application.cs you can see once all the initialization is done internally it is calling this create my app method similar is the case with the ios if you open the app delegate.cs here also we are calling create my app method we can also understand this with the help of a flow diagram the following image illustrates the flow of control when a dotnet my app starts up as we know there are separate folders for ios android and windows inside our my application and each of the operating system have their separate startup processes but much of the startup processes are abstracted out by the my libraries internally the important point here is when the initialization is complete the platform specific code calls the create my application method which then creates and runs the app object as described earlier and further it runs the application so this is how the flow goes when the dotnet my application starts so that's it for this tutorial in our next video we'll discuss some more concepts about the dotnet my if you found this video helpful 
do not forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to leave a comment below. See you in the next video.